welcome to Cooking Classic. I'm Jane Adonisio, here with Chef Dave Pembleton. Hi, Hello. Dave. How are you? I'm well. You. We are at the Luzerne County Community College Paglianiti Culinary Institute here in Nanticoke. And Chef, we know you as a great chef, but I also know that you are a certified executive chef. What does that mean? Well, that means you've gone through uh, different uh, educational components and different cooking components, and they test you at different levels to become certified uh, through the American Culinary Federation uh, of, of the United States. And you teach a lot of students here at LCCC. Yeah, it seems like it's growing every year. We get more and more and more. It seems to be a growing uh, industry. It is, and especially yeah. with all the cooking shows on television, I think there's more interest in it in general. There is, and there's a lot of restaurants, and there's a lot of places for them to work. Great. Well, we have two wonderful pasta recipes coming up, and we're going to dive into them in just a minute. So okay. stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Beth, and I'm a culinary student here at Luzerne County Community College, and this is your culinary tip of the day. Today I'm going to be showing you how to braid challah bread. It is a seasonal holiday bread that is normally braided. So what you want to do first is cut your dough into three equal parts. Or as equal as you can make them. <laughs> so what you're going to do next is put down a little bench flour so it doesn't stick. Then you're going to take one of the pieces that we just cut and you want to form it into a long cylinder. You do that by working your dough and pushing down and out with your hands as you're rolling it. This is going to take a little bit of work. Your dough is pretty elastic, so you're going to have to push out with your hands as much as possible. You want to try and keep it even as you're going. So your end goal is to get it as even as possible and you want it about that length. Next, I'm going to set this one aside and roll out the next one. Okay, once you're finished with the pieces and they're pretty even, you want to line them up next to each other. You're gonna attach the ends and pinch them. And then what you do is you braid always over the middle. So you'll take the right one first, then your left. You wanna make it pretty tight. Then keep going and pulling over the middle to form a braid. When you get to the end, you're gonna do the same thing as you did at the beginning. You wanna fold over your ends and pinch them to seal it. Kind of tuck it underneath. Okay, next you're going to transfer your braided bread to the tray. What you're going to do next is brush it down with a little egg wash, which helps turn it a golden color and keep it nice in the oven. Egg wash just consists of a single egg and a tiny bit of milk beaten together. You don't want to do it too heavy or you'll end up with scrambled eggs on your bread, which is not what you want. <laughs> make sure you get all around the sides to make sure it browns evenly. And then if you'd like, you can sprinkle, sprinkle it with poppy seeds, sesame seeds, or any other kind that you would think of. After this, you, were, wouldn't, you would wanna let this set out at room temperature to proof for about 45 minutes. After it's done proofing, you bake it at 350 degrees um, for about a half hour, 40 minutes, and this is your end result. The dark color results from the high fat in the bread. And that's your culinary tip of the day. Bon appetit. Welcome back to Cooking Classic. We are here at the Paglianiti Culinary Institute at Luzerne County Community College. And Chef Dave, I know you have two wonderful pasta recipes whipped up for us. We're going to start right. them in just a minute. And the first one is? It's a, pasta, it's a classic pasta dish called uh, pasta carbonara, which is a, a, 
a, a mixture of some smoked meats, some pasta, some cream, and some vegetables for color. So, um, uh, Jane, the way we get this started, I uh, just have a little bit of uh, oil in the pan just uh, so, the, so the bacon won't stick. Okay, so we're going to get started here. We're just going to put the bacon in the pan. And we're just looking, uh, Jane, to render the bacon down, which means to, um, which, which means to cook it, um, not to brown it, but to cook it so it releases its fat. Okay, so we're going to cook it until that white fat of the bacon starts to disappear. Okay, so you do have to put a little oil in the pan, even though there is fat in the bacon, right? Well, yeah, here's what happens. This is a white sauce, so okay. if you put the bacon in the pan without a little bit of oil, it starts to color, and if it starts to color, it makes the sauce kind of brown. I see. And, you know, not, not as desirable, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, we're just going to cook this, like I said, just until some of that white fat of the bacon kind of cooks down and releases its flavors. But we don't, we want to try not to brown the meat very much. And uh, this is a saute dish, so it's kind of, the timing is very important. So as soon as I see that bacon getting, um, getting to the point where I think it needs to be, then we're going to start adding the, the other types of vegetables that, uh, that we have going on. Okay. Um, and you can use any type of pasta with this, Jane, uh, whatever you have in your pantry. But tonight I'm, I'm uh, I, li I like these uh, bow ties. Uh, another name for bow tie is farfella. Um, I like it because it really, it kind of cradles the sauce nicely, mm -hmm. okay? So next thing we're going to do is we're going to then put our vegetables in, and we're just putting our, uh, I've got some onions here, and I've got some, uh, a julienne of, uh, of peppers, and I like that for the color. And again, we're just trying to, we're just looking to tenderize those. We're not looking mm -hmm. to brown them. Uh, there's, a, there's a cooking term called sweating, uh, which in cooking terms means just to cook in fat without browning too much. Um, this is a white sauce, so we don't, we don't wanna, we don't wanna add too much color. Could you also use prosciutto, say, instead of bacon? That's a very, very good point. You could use any kind of, uh, any other kind of ham, any other type of cured pork product. So yeah, that's a very, very good point. Uh, if, I, if I didn't have uh, bacon, maybe I'd use pancetta. If I didn't have pancetta, okay. I could use uh, prosciutto. If I don't have any of those, maybe I can just use some type of cured ham. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a it's a and it's a very good point because uh, especially cooking at home, a lot of times you don't have exactly what you need, so you can kind of uh, you can kind of uh, improvise. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It's very very good. Okay, okay. Now once we're to that point, um, we're gonna put our we're gonna start to uh, we're gonna start to make some uh, some sauce here. So we're gonna put some heavy cream. Mm -hmm. And when I put the heavy cream in, I like to I like to let the heat be up on high. And um, then what we're looking to do, uh, Jane, is we're w just waiting for that cream to reduce. And as the cream reduces, uh, it gives a it gives a, a luster. It mm -hmm. gets thicker, and all those types of things. And as as it's doing that, it, it just uh, it kind of blends all those flavors that are in there all together. And uh, it, it's just. It's really luxurious. It's unlike yeah, any, the, any other aroma. thing. Heavy cream mm -hmm. and butter, those types of things together, when you reduce them down, they become naturally thick uh, without really having to put any type of thickening agent. And it really, really does give a really, really great flavor. So we're gonna, we're gonna let that continue to cook. And as you can see, it's already, it's already reducing. And uh, it actually gets a shine to it as well because there's so much, uh, there's so much milk fat mm -hmm. in the heavy cream. Uh, it also becomes shiny. Uh, so you can see it's already starting to do uh, all those things that we talked about. Um, and as it's cooking, it's, it's pulling all the flavors out of the bacon, out of the onions, out of the peppers. And it's actually just a really, really beautiful, um, it's a really beautiful taste together. All right, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of parsley, okay? A little bit of parsley, this, you know, this time for color, okay? And then we're gonna put a little bit of Parmesan cheese and parmesan cheese if you don't have parmesan cheese you could use another mm -hmm. you could use pecorini romano any type of dry cheese would work okay and now you can see it's really bubbling so at this point in time i think it's getting pretty thick so i think uh jane if you could hand me that pasta absolutely i think what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add our pasta now i have the pasta pre-cooked um and it's pre-cooked to uh, a thing called al dente which means to the tooth or it means firm to the bite um, but if you didn't want to do if you wanted to cook this while you were making your sauce, you certainly can. Mm -hmm. But uh, farfelli, farfelli noodles or bow ties, as they're commonly called, uh, they take a they take a little bit of time to cook. Um, 
So if you want to pre-cook them, uh, I, would, I would definitely uh, cook them only to al dente and then um, we cool them down. Because then they'll cook through a little bit more when you heat them. Exactly and... right. Yeah, and you don't, there's nothing worse than, than you know, biting into pasta, and it's mushy. Right. Uh, and you certainly don't want that, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to continue to let that reduce a little bit. And as that's reducing, uh, the flavors are intensifying, and it's getting thick, and it's making this creamy velvety beautiful sauce it's like, amazing how fast it comes together too. it's re it's really really quick and uh if you notice i i always have a little bit of extra heavy cream just in case mm -hmm. i need it because you never know if it starts to get too thick on you right you know right away you can always add that mm -hmm. okay now we're just going to finish this dish off with our smoked ham okay and a little um a little bit of parmesan cheese now, Chef, some people might use eggs in their carbonara. That's a good point. And, and classically, it's a very, very good point. And Alfredo and carbonara classically are made using an egg yolk at the end. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it really, really luxurious. It makes it really, really rich. It gives it a beautiful color. But the problem is if you let it get to a boil even a little bit, what happens is it breaks and it curdles. So sometimes, you know, um, you have to really, really watch it very, very, very carefully. So, sure. um, so that's why I, I, didn't, um, I didn't make it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, there's, there's also sanitation issues with eggs, cooking with eggs sure. and all those types of things, getting them to the right temperature. Mm. So uh, in, our, in our recipe today, um, we, we didn't use it. We just got all of the richness from the cream and the, and the Parmesan cheese. Right. So Jane, could you do me a favor and can you just hand oh, me one sure. of those plates there? And we're going to plate this up and right at the very end, we're just going to put some nice green peas. Oh, that's and I, great. I just, I just really like that garnish, you know, mm -hmm. and then, uh, what we would do is just, you know, kind of stir this around and we're just going to plate this up and we're just going to finish it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese at the end. And uh, I think you can smell, you, you mm -hmm. can smell how, how, you know, the, the, the different flavors from the bacon and the ham and the different vegetables. And you can see the colors. It's you, so the, colorful. And we didn't overcook anything, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's, the, that's the true key to, to, to cooking properly is, uh, is cooking things just till they're done and uh, not overcooking them and, um, you know, having, ha and, and really it's actually a very simple dish. It is, uh, and that could feed a family. It could, it could. <laughs> and uh, me, in my, in my household, I always cook too much because then we have really great leftovers the next day. Well, yeah, and that's the nature of your business, too. <laughs> right. So if we can put this out here, Jane, that's Terrific. kind of the how, how it looks. Wow. That's our pasta carbonara. Um, great. That's how we make it here at the school. Great. Do we get to taste? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Mm. Nothing better than tasting, right? So good. Yeah. So creamy. I don't think it needs anything. It doesn't, mm -hmm. there's a lot of salt in the bacon, a mm -hmm. lot of salt in the ham, so, and from the cheese. So, mm. I mean, I, I don't season things very much well, because a lot of times you can get it from the, from sure. the foods. So. Absolutely. Well, that's a great dish. And we have another great pasta recipe, and that's coming up. So, right. stay with us. We'll be right back. I think one of the major advantages, obviously, as many people say, is the financial aspect. Uh, we are much less expensive than many of the other institutions, whether it be a two-year school or a four-year school. And the quality of education that you get is just as good no matter where you go. The great thing about the program here in Communication Arts at Luzerne County Community College is that we are providing a realistic, hands-on approach to the skills that are necessary to get a job in the field. It, it's really all meant to give you a skill set that's necessary to be successful in your career field. So when you come here to LCCC, uh, you're actually working on the latest equipment, high definition, uh, 4K, uh, the latest in, in technology. 
and it gives you the ability to be prepared so that when you graduate with your Associate of Applied Science degree here, you'll be able to go right into an entry-level position and start your career. I recommend students based on a case-by-case -case basis by knowing their personalities, their skill levels, learning a little bit about their backgrounds, what their future goals are, and then trying to guide them to pick a choice that's good for them. Some students come here and what they really need is someone to just believe in them, to guide them. And I think we also do that way above just what goes on in the classroom. We are able to get to know our students, know their personalities, their likes, dislikes, their interests. I think our degree is very beneficial to students because it's very broad in range. It's not just coming in here and only learning one thing. You're gaining skill sets in every aspect of the field so that when it actually comes time to get a job, you can go to the future employer and say, I know how to do this, 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 and this, and you're, it makes you much more employable. Knowing how to make a few good pasta dishes will take you far in any kitchen. Welcome back to Cooking Classic, Chef Dave. You already have the carbonara all made and underway. Now what? Now we're going to try a, a, a popular dish these days, a dish called a penny alla vodka. So we're going to start by uh, toasting some garlic in a pan. Um, and what toasting garlic means, just to lightly brown it. Uh, and you can see, I've... Uh, I've slivered the garlic here. You can mince it, but sometimes in this type of a dish, because there's not a whole lot of substance going on inside, mm -hmm. um, I like to see the pieces of garlic. And um, I like to toast them lightly, just lightly brown, just in a touch of olive oil here. And it just, uh, it brings out the flavor. And anytime you can caramelize anything, it, ad it adds an awful lot of flavor, okay? Does cutting the garlic different ways give it different flavor? I think the best thing to do is just slice it. Okay. Um, but a lot of people don't like to bite into big pieces of mm -hmm. garlic. But I have found, Jane, that if you mince garlic really, really fine, I have found that it makes it bitter. Okay. So I think you're, there's some type okay. of, you know, in the middle somewhere is probably best. Mm, it smells and, uh, delicious. And there's nothing like fresh garlic. Um, so we're just going to toast that up a little bit. Now, next I'm going to do a thing called deglazing the pan. And we're using uh, some vodka here, Jane. So sometimes this, uh, I always take it off the fire. And sometimes when you put it back through the fire, Ooh. it has a tendency to, to want to flame up a little bit. Until all the alcohol is cooked out. Beautiful. Right? And you can see after all the alcohol is cooked out, um, you're left just with the flavor of the, okay. of the vodka. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our marinara sauce. You can, uh, you can use fresh made marinara sauce from... Uh, from your pantry, or you can um, you can use one that's store bought, mm -hmm. whatever uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, I just like a nice, fresh looking, fresh tasting marinara sauce. Okay, and we're gonna just let that cook for just a little bit. Mm. Looks great. Smells good, already. doesn't it? Yeah, it sure yeah, does. Yeah, really does. And uh, now we're gonna put some we're gonna put some cream in here. Heavy cream. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to let that, you're going to kind of let that reduce a little bit. And heavy cream just adds a richness that you can't get from anything else. It's just, uh, it's just what it is. Um, and the, 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 the taste of tomato mm. and that cream together is really something. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll let that start to reduce a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of um, Parmesan cheese in with the... And with the sauce, uh, I think it gives it a really 
nice flavor, it gives it a nice body. It helps it stick to the noodles a bit, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna kinda toss that around like so. And this pasta, this uh, this uh, sauce has become popular. Sure. You know, over the last four or five years, mm -hmm. I think. You know, when I first came up through the industry, you didn't. Uh, you, this this wasn't seen on hardly any menus. Mm -hmm. Now there's hardly any menus that you don't see it on. So I think it's a uh, very popular. And you can see is if you have your if you have all of your uh, your stuff cut up and ready to go, you could have dinner on the table in, in just a few minutes. Right. Okay. And we're gonna season it with a little bit of black pepper. Okay. I like to use a little bit of parsley. For color and um, whenever I can I like to use fresh herbs and I like to get them out of the garden if you if, you know if you Definitely. have one of those garden boxes or something Definitely. I think they're really they're really uh, you know especially this time you know especially uh, when you're cooking a sauce that's this, this simple sure. fresh herbs really add a another sure. dimension to it and the okay. supermarkets have them mostly year-round so that's right. great right and I notice when you cook you don't often stir things in you just toss them and then you move the pan Yeah, I just move the pan yeah. that's just what I do okay. um, and if I were to stir this sauce I would stir it with a wooden spoon not a okay. metal one because I don't like uh, sometimes if you stir it with a metal one you give it a metallic taste I see uh, so Jane if you'd be kind enough to hand Absolutely. me that pasta I think we're to that point so we can add our pasta to our sauce and then we're gonna let this pasta Cook in this sauce for a few minutes. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, that that'll let it take on the flavor of the sauce and, and that type of a thing, and it'll kind of uh, get nice and rich and creamy in the pan here. And then we'll be ready to okay. uh, plate that up in, in, in just a little bit. It takes just a few minutes to just to cook into the sauce. Yeah, and while that's blending, we'll uh, we'll just stir that around a bit. And cooking classic, we'll be right back. So stay with us. Okay. Yeah. And as it cooks in the sauce, it just. Uh, it becomes it better, better and better. Hi, I'm Avis. I'm a culinary student at Luzerne County Community College, and this is your culinary tip of the day. Today we're going to flip an egg. Um, this is something that takes practice, and it's, uh, it's fun to do for your family and things. So first, we're going to heat up our pan. Things that you might need, things that you're going to need are oil, your eggs, a plate, your, uh, your pan, and your spatula. Small amount of oil, you don't need a whole lot. You want to let your pan get heated up pretty nicely before putting the eggs in. Then we're going to add our eggs. Now you want to let your eggs settle and get firm. They want to get uh, white and firm so that you have enough ability to, uh, that they're firm enough that you can flip them in the pan. You might want to take your spatula and move them around slightly. Make sure that they are movable for when you do flip them. This is a lot of fun. My nephews and nieces, they just, they just get such a kick out of me when I do this at home. Notice the eggs are pretty firm, solid. You tilt it forward and flip. You're gonna let them cook a couple minutes on this side so that they're white through. I like mine over easy, you know. You might like yours over hard. You might wanna cook them a little bit longer. And move them around in your pan again. Make sure you have that movement in your pan. You can pretty much tell looking at your egg to see through if there's any clear still there or not. Lean it forward and flip it back. Turn your heat off and add it to your plate.
That is your culinary tip of the day. Enjoy, have fun, show your family. Bon appetit. Welcome back to Cooking Classic. We've been working on our penne a la vodka sauce, and it smells so delicious right now. Right. And now we're just going to finish it up, uh, Jane. A um, little trick that I, I, I like to teach the students in the school is at the very end, sometimes I like to swirl in just a little bit of butter. Um, depending on what uh, type of cooking you were doing, sometimes people like to finish off with olive oil. But this is a, ch a trick that I learned um, uh, in my career. And I really like the creaminess at, it, at the end if you just swirl in some fresh whole butter. It was, and the butter's cold. Sure. Uh, and, and what it does, it kind of melts and it kind of gives an extra din dimension to the sauce, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, I, and then I it, never would have thought to do that. Right, and then I have uh, some chopped uh, basil here, fresh basil, mm -hmm. right out of the garden that we're gonna finish this dish off, off with. Uh, and that just gives another, just another flavor and the color looks beautiful and all that kind of stuff. Perfect. So Jane, if you would be kind enough to bring up a dish, sure. uh, we can plate this up, and then I think we can give it a little try, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think with this one, I think it's just gonna fit that plate just perfectly. So we're just going to, sometimes I, I like the way food falls out of, a, mm. out, of a, out of a pan, just the way it is. I think it kind of looks the best just the way it and is. And that recipe went together so quickly. And so right. at, at the end of a day after work, you could put that together and have fresh pasta on the table in minutes. Very easy. And then if you wanted to, you can finish it off with, with, uh, with some fresh basil mm. right, off, right, out, right out of the garden, uh, just nice. like so. Very so nice. do you think we should try it? I think so. Okay. All right. Let's give it a try. Mmm. I don't think it needs anything. What do you think? Perfect. Okay. Perfecto. Okay. So that's, uh, those, those are our two um, classic pasta dishes. The carbonara uh, and the penne alla vodka. Right. And uh, that's how simple it can be. That's awesome. And if you'd like more recipes or to see shows, you can go to luzerne.edu slash cooking classic. Chef Dave, you're amazing in the kitchen. You make everything seem so easy. And actually, it is, and people can just try this right with the recipe that you've given us tonight. Right. It was great working with you, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll see you back here next time on Cooking Classic. <laughs>